Comments made on the following paid commercial program are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any matter whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Welcome to the Money and Wealth Show. On the program this week, tax tips with David Ingram, money marshals, and our special guest, Ian Gordon. Welcome to the Money and Wealth Show. I'm Sterling Fox, and we are on location in White Rock this weekend, and our special guest is international economic forecaster and president and founder of the Long Wave Group, Ian Gordon. Ian, welcome to the show. Well, thank you very much for having me. It's good to have you, and thank you for, for your hospitality and inviting us to the seaside for well, this uh, program. <laughs> it's uh, much easier for me to be here than it is for you. You are uh, a student of a Russian economist named Nikolai Kondratiev. Thus, your group, the Long Wave Group, is founded on the notion that we repeat cycles in approximately 70-year intervals. Could you give us a little more substance to what you mean by the long wave principle? Um, right, it, it is about a 70 year cycle, but it's, that's only an approximation. And I like to think of it as a lifetime cycle because we only live in a meaningful way for 70 years. And uh, therefore, we have no recollection of where we are at any particular point in the cycle because we haven't lived that period before. And uh, we divide the cycle into the four seasons of the year, which we think are appropriate. And each of the seasons is approximately a quarter of the entire 70 year cycle, so 15, 17, 20 years. Okay. And uh, spring is the, it begins the cycle, and it's the beginning or the rebirth of the economy. Uh, summer is the burgeoning time of the economy when it reaches its fruition. Autumn is the kind of feel-good period. Everyone does awfully well in stocks, bonds, and real estate in the autumn, so everyone feels pretty good about that because lots of money's coming in. And then winter is the time when the economy dies because it's overwhelmed by the um, massive amount of debt that's been built in throughout the three previous seasons, but principally in the autumn. That's when the debt really starts to take hold of the economy and overcome the economy. So the economy dies in winter. Debt is taken out of the out of the system and so that we can start refreshed in the following spring. Now, I would gather by that analysis, uh, it just has to be winter right now, doesn't it? It, it certainly does, and it, it, by our sort of uh, measurement, the winter of this cycle started in uh, 2000, when the real speculation in the stock markets uh, came to an end, and, and particularly, you know, the mass of speculation uh, occurred principally in the NASDAQ, where you had the dot-com era and everybody was going gangbusters right. in tech and, and dot-com stocks. And the NASDAQ peaked in about March uh, 2000, and uh, about 5,600. Uh, the Dow peaked in January of 2000, 11,750. And that peak in, those, in the markets, the stock markets, essentially signals the onset of winter. And you could go back to 1929 and say the peak in that stock market signaled the onset of winter. And uh, you could then go back to even 1873 and say the peak in that stock market signaled the onset of winter. So it's always that big bull market in stocks. When it peaks, it tells you you're going into winter. Now, uh, this current cycle in which we are in the middle of winter started when? In 1950? Well, the current cycle, yes, 49. Okay. Right, in 1949. So that began the spring out of the depression of the 30s, started into the spring in 1949, and the Dow was at 161 points, for instance. Now, you know that the spring is the rebirth of the economy, and so, you know, for investment purposes, you want to be in things that are going to enjoy that kind of rebirth. So you want to be in the stock market. Uh, you want to go back into real estate because real estate and stocks are being sort of uh, badly punished in the winter. 
And um, so they do very well. The stock market, as I said, the Dow was 161 in 1949. It rises to 900 and, uh, sorry, uh, 995 by the end of spring in June 1966. So that peak tells you you're now going into summer. Oh, okay. And you get that big stock market peak. And then summer is always the inflationary period of the cycle. And because uh, we've always had a war in the summer, which has been uh, paid for by money printing, and therefore you've had inflation as a result of the excess of money printing. So, first cycle was the War of 1812. The second cycle was the U.S. Civil War. Third cycle was the uh, Vietnam War, and uh, sorry, the third cycle was the 1914-18 War, and the fourth cycle was the Vietnam War. So. Summer, uh, the end of summer is always signaled by four events, which tells you you're now going into this massive speculative market in stocks, bonds, and real estate. And those four events are a peak in prices, uh, commodity prices, a peak in interest rates, a bear market in stocks, and a recession. So you'll probably remember the peak in interest rates, 1981 at about uh, here in Canada at 20%. Oh yes, we remember them well. <laughs> right, and then the peak in prices are saying the commodity price peak, and uh, the recession, 1981-82 recession, and the bear market in stocks that took the Dow from 1,000 down to 777. So those four events tell you you're going into autumn. And then autumn, as I say, is the biggest speculative period in stocks. You can make a lot of money in stocks. You could have bought the Dow at 777 in August 1982 and rode the stock market all the way up into January 2000 when the Dow peaked at 11,750 quite a ride it would have been. It, uh, we need to take a break. Just before we go though, um, how many cycles does this go back? It was developed initially by this Russian economist Nikolai Kondratiev. When did he start uh, and how many have we been through since he started? He, he started, the, the first cycle started in 1789, really with the dawn of the Industrial Revolution. Okay. And so this is the fourth cycle that we're currently in. Of course he wasn't alive for for this cycle, he died in, in the 30s, so uh, we've just extended his work beyond that and uh, basically by measuring where we are in terms of the markets, we know where we are in the cycle. Our guest is Ian Gordon, founder of the Long Wave Group, and we're talking about the Long Wave Principle this weekend on the Money and Wealth Show. Lots more to come after this. My name is David Wolfen. I'm the president of Avino Silver and Gold Mines. Avino owns 100% of the historic Avino mine in Durango, Mexico. Mining dates back over 500 years and under our control, we mined it for 27 years. We're starting on a new era of mining and we plan to reopen the mine this year. Avino trades on the Toronto Venture Exchange under the symbol ASM. For more information, call 604-682-3701 or visit the company's website, www.avino.com. Good afternoon. My name is Larry Ray. I'm the president and CEO of American Manganese, Inc. I'm here to tell you today that American Manganese could possibly bring in the lowest cost electrolytic manganese metal mine in North America. It would be the first one in the past few decades. What is manganese? Well, you can't have a steel industry without manganese. If you don't have manganese, you don't have steel. If you don't have steel, the world stops. North America has no manganese. We depend on our neighbors and other countries to import our manganese and it just doesn't make any sense we don't exploit the resources in our own country. So I'm here to tell you that we are moving ahead with the feasibility study, we're moving ahead with the environmental studies, and we're moving ahead with a massive drill program in order to build the American Manganese Inc. into the first primary electrolytic manganese producer in the United States. Please visit our website at AmericanManganeseInc.com or call us at 604-531-9639. Thank you.